In the same vein, we have a couple of speakers at once uh, who have started a venture called Impact Finance, Andy Krepsky and Paul Allard. Come on on, guys. They're going to do a tap dance here for, for you and tell them, and they're going to tell us what they're, what they're going to do. And I understand that they're going to make an announcement about a new cryptocurrency. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Whatever that is. Anyway, over to you. Thank Thanks. you very much. Hello. Uh, well, yeah. Well, Hello, well, thank Andy. Thank you, Diane, and thank you, Moses, for uh, giving us this opportunity to tell you a bit, little bit of our project. You might wonder why an advertising guy and a non-banker are talking about launching a bank. How well, like um, Diane told us, uh, Steve Jobs was not a techie, and he did invent something big called Apple. So I'm not a banker, and I'm inventing probably something that we hope can uh, disrupt the financial world, uh, which a bank will be uh, one of the results in a couple of years, I hope. Yes, and, and my firm, The High, believes in the millennial issue we just heard about, their values, what they're demanding from society, and we really think that all of what Tanya just said is absolutely and fundamentally true that the financial system can change the world. And maybe a few words on how it started, because you got me. No, who got you? You got me. No, you got me no, here. No, no, you got me. Yeah, I got you here. You're here, yeah. So you got me involved in the damn thing in the first place. Yeah, yeah, correct. You thought it was crazy. You, do, you still think so, right? All right. <laughs> so <laughs> We fundamentally believe uh, you can no longer ignore what's going on in society. Um, globally, locally, you just can't ignore it anymore. And you've got, if, you, if you feel that, you've got to do something about it. Yeah, and, and one thing that I think is important is that the current economic system today doesn't work for only about half of the population of the planet. So, and, and if we go further, what it, does that mean? It, it means that 1% in 2016, the 1% got to a point where that, they own now over 50% of the world's wealth. That means, in a nutshell, that less and less people decide more and more stuff and have more and more influence on this system that they trigger and they push in the direction that they will feed the system. That's what it means. And it was exciting to hear this morning, I was with Andy, my God, they're inventing, going to the moon, and their transportation is changing, and transplant, and all of that stuff is super disruptive and innovative. But at the end, we still have today more than a billion people not eating enough food per day. And we also have an island that is almost as big as Australia of plastic in the ocean, just to name two things that we didn't solve. So yes, we need innovation, we need disruption. And we think that money, capital, cash, the one that we spend every single day that we save and we put in a bank, could be something of a solution. <laughs> he says, you're, you're, you're in charge I'm of the I'm driving time. it, otherwise he goes on. <laughs> he, um, goes on. he knows me. <laughs> <laughs> you heard about trust in institutions declining, um, and I will quote a figure from the same uh, Edelman barometer. 53% um, of the population uh, believes the system is failing and simply don't trust. 2008 was a massive moment when the millennials, uh, and we say that's a demography. I think of the millennial as a mindset. That way I can fit myself <laughs> into that group. That's the best. That was supposed to be my joke. I said, you, but, <laughs> but anyway, we also got this thing that's happening in the U.S. called the post-truth or alternative facts, mm. interestingly being replacing truth, largely driven by emotion and anger. And our favorite guy here, um, <laughs> he, is, he and many others are forcing uh, ourselves and, and to walk away from government's leading change. These are the reactions from two major executives after Trump left the Paris Environmental Accord. Essentially, we're going to keep doing it, we're going to do it ourselves. Apple said the same thing, Microsoft said the same thing. We believe fundamentally there are five truths that will change our future. First, harnessing the power of innovation, and I think this conference speaks to that in volumes. Two, transparency. People want to know 
you say what you do. So in the communications world, it always was about the storytelling world. Now it's about story doing. Walk your talk, and if you don't, you're in trouble. Lofty aspirations that have a positive impact. So go big or go home, but make sure whatever it is you do big make a difference. And finally, build organizations with lots of tolerance and empowerment. Uh, and that leads us to, we do feel that we're uh, in an exciting time and this inflection point. And we, we think that this turning point, especially in the, uh, the sector that we're, we're, we're in now, uh, we're in up to here in, in, in that sector, uh, but there's three major waves that converges. And the first wave that we think uh, that demonstrates that we're at the right timing is the fintech, the fintech world financial technologies. And how it comes about is that in 2008, a bunch of bankers had no job anymore in the city in London. And they decided to say, we know how it works and how it doesn't work well or how we could gain efficiency. And they started to code and hire a tech technology guy and do some stuff. That's how it started, to want to change the system. And there's a, a piece of it that I will leave to our next speaker, which is an extraordinary speaker uh, about blockchain, which I do think will change the planet and society. So FinTech is a first wave that is mature. The second wave, uh, Andy's generation, the 18 to 40s, yeah, yeah, yeah. The millennial. Yeah. I call them the mobile generation, but uh, Andy understands. He, it's, yeah. you, you have the right mindset. Thank you. Uh, Thank yeah. you. So they are changing, and, and if you give a few numbers, because... I mean, you can see them yourself. 71% would rather go to the dentist than go to a bank. Um, <laughs> if, if you ask them to bank with Amazon, PayPal, or um, Apple, they go like this. They're looking for relationships uh, that they seek a purpose. Millennials, fundamentally, all of us <laughs> seek a purpose. <laughs> um, another issue uh, and that's become uh, clear in any marketing communication is you don't tell people what a brand is anymore. They tell each other what that brand stands for and their values. And unless you're prepared to get into that narrative with the same values, you're dead. So they are demanding trust and transparency from the banking system, and, and they want help with financial acumen. They want you to align with their values, and they want you to talk to them on their channels, in their way, the way they want to be you, spoken you to. You the mobile phone. You have one? Uh, yes, I do. Yeah, okay, no, just making sure that you yeah, use well, it. Well, I'm a millennial. It, eh? Go ahead. Yeah, okay, go ahead. And, and this leads us to the third wave, with it, which we, we've been speaking about, and the impact economy. And the impact economy is about companies that are not, and it's not about just making uh, stuff, selling stuff and polluting, and after that, putting a few $10 million in, in buying your, 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 yourself back into society. No, it's companies that go, that in their DNA wants to produce products or services that wants to solve a social or environmental problem by making profits. Whatever their format is, an ink, uh, NPO, uh, uh, co-op, who cares? And it grows and it grows fast due to the millennials, due to the fintechs, but due to this consciousness of, yes, we seek return, but with a purpose. And it grows. It, numbers are numbers, but uh, serious uh, uh, companies like KPNG or others say it's between $400 billion to $1 trillion in, 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 by 2020. Just saying that it is growing. A few ex examples, but... Uh, 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 Bill, who was the first uh, speaker, which is our chairman, by the way, and a first uh, uh, supporter of Impact Finance, uh, mentioned a few companies, but I like to put pictures on this. Janice did an extraordinary work by starting something 20 years ago that were really six employees and in, in each two weeks couldn't pay them. She has built this successful uh, uh, organization that hires over 500 uh, uh, people. The next one in, in Montreal is Pierre Legault, who did the same thing 20 years ago. Now it's growing 20% per year and making money, but repouring this money into this, uh, this social impact mission. And the third one is uh, Tanya Sherman. I don't know if you know about uh, Center of Social Innovation. It's a shared uh, space where startups that are in the impact space are being given facilities and abilities to grow. There's 800 companies there, and if you add Mars's 
another 500 to 1,000. There's 2,000 potential companies in the sustainability space lo yeah. will be looking for money in these five blocks around us. So it's, it, it's quite, quite incredible for Toronto to be in that position. So money does matter. Yeah, and, and, and I'll, 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 but uh, 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 please, please uh, let me, money does matter, and maybe, okay, go ahead, go ahead, <laughs> you're talking about this, okay. And, and Rachel Botsman has uh, written a bunch of books, but are, uh, and she's been uh, sort of nominated by Fast Company as one of the most innovative strategic thinkers. And this quote from her, I think, is fundamental to what we're trying to say to you today, that money is the currency of transactions, but trust, but trust is the currency of interaction. And I think... Ultimately, that's what we want impact finance to be. And uh, we believe that money does matter, and uh, we, we're, we all agree on this. And we've seen all these fantastic projects today. None of these projects without capital would see, would, would see a, a real concrete result. And we think that if we could put in the DNA of money or in the structure of our organization the fact that it could have social impact, that would be pretty cool, right? And money do represent different things to different people. And, and keep in mind that money as itself has absolutely no value. It's not the coin, the silver, the, the, the cheap metal coin, or the, uh, the shell in some countries, or the piece of paper with, with someone. Uh, I think it's a queen from another country on it, here in Canada. It's the physical uh, value of it is nothing. The, the value of the money comes from the trust users put in it being a value of exchange or a, 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 a way to calculate the wealth that they can exchange for a house in the future. So we come back to, to, to the trust. We, yes, and we live in an exciting age. Um, and our contribution and, and, and our hope to give back and to have fun while we're doing it is, is the Impact Finance Project. Impact finance will ultimately be a bank. We'll talk about the timeline in a minute, but it will demonstrate both in terms of service to customers issues that they care about. It will be a societal statement, in other words, transforming the decision of choosing a bank into a proactive societal choice that make a real difference every day. In other words, letting customers, allowing their leveraged money in a bank, being invested in an impact economy that has actual social good in its local marketplace. Oops. Create a transformative experience. So experience, again, as I talked to the millennials, it has to, uh, about millennials, it has to be transformative. The customer experience has to be best in class, and it has to be frictionless. And clearly, everything we do will have transparency. We will be talking about a launch in a minute, but everything we've done, we've done making sure our original shareholders know what we're doing and they have a say in what we're doing. So the timeline, essentially, our mission at Impact Finance is to, to put the financial world at the service of the impact economy. So our goal is to attract a maximum of capital from the traditional economy and pour it into the impact economy and make sure that it sticks there and it grows. And, that, that's, and the idea for us is also to reinvent the experience we have with money and with all these companies or institutions that deal with our money, insurance company, banking, uh, 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 merchants, and go on and so forth, and the payment services, that's the, 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 common, the common thread. In 2017, what we want to accomplish is first to launch a fund, a, 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 a loan fund that will lend money to impact companies for a return uh, to the, the uh, institutions that we, we will manage the money for. And the second thing, which is a, the core of our differentiator, we are developing currently and launching by the end of 2017 a social network called Impact Echo essentially giving the power to citizens to be able to collaborate and to interact with the enterprises that makes a difference, that are seeking revenues and are seeking capital, which is the third uh, groups in, group interested in this uh, uh, relationship, the capital partners that are seeking deal flow, uh, companies that are successful. And this network, I think, will be uh, a transformative approach to how money flows. And within this ecosystem, we do think that using mobile, you'll, you'll be able to collaborate, to give your time, to spend money at the right place, to save it in our fund first, eventually when we will be a bank, to also open a bank account, 
of a bank that says that everything he, they do and where they put the money, so absolutely transparent, that's a big disruption. I do think it's a huge disruption. So that's the idea that we're thinking with our team. And today, because the time is going, we are announcing here at Idea City, because it's a, I think it's a huge idea, to put some, uh, some virility and some gamification into all of this. And since we want to use technology to cut cost and be to be flexible, we are launching today the first cryptocurrency called Impact Coin, dedicated to the impact economy. That means that it's a, a currency which, in the code, there's a code that is dedicated to supporting the impact economy. So, in, essentially, it, combine, it, it will combine the, uh, uh, the functionalities of a loyalty program, of a reward program, and with the facility of the new blockchain technology that uh, promises more than we can even imagine today. And this is really a way for us to think, are we are absolutely convinced that in Canada it will do accelerate the growth and it, uh, of, of this ecosystem by rewarding people for their participation when they spend, they'll have a, a money uh, cash back in MPKs and impact coin. And if they give their time for a company, they'll be paid in impact coin that they'll be able to spend in another company within the ecosystem that they know it's an impactful company and go on and so forth. We do think that we can create something new and that can go global because this currency this thematic currency could be the currency of imp social impact economy in the world, in combination with other currencies in the United States, in Europe, in India, in China, go on and so forth. All this currency where their code and the DNA is built in values that we share and that Andy's generation is sharing. And this is huge, and you can go on, I won't go in how, we, how it works, because it, it's fairly complex, and, and, and Don, that is our next speaker, will tell you why it's a huge revolution. And I, 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 I always insist that I started my career in the internet in 1995, where I had to spell out internet, and I had to convince the investors, investors that it will change the world and their companies. Today, I feel like the same thing, the blockchain, is a huge revolution. Everybody here, if you're here, that you're interested in, 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 in new ideas, you need to read about the blockchain. So it's a fairly big announcement. And we're excited about it. You can find out more about it. We have several of our impact team here. Um, we launched a crowd equity funding program last October, um, which is different from this. We created equity. We got 1,000 shareholders. We really did it to see and assess whether there was a, a sense of need in the, in the marketplace, having done a lot of research in, in the markets. We raised well over a million dollars, had 1,000 shareholders in under 76 hours. So we know there's a need. The cryptocurrency launch is now global. So we're able to be the first entity to launch a currency that'll speak to the world in an effort to create money to invest in things that change our world. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Right on time.